Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High and today I'm reviewing Module 8 from the Universe to the Atom and in particular the fourth inquiry question which looks at the properties of the nucleus. Now, a quick reminder, anything that I produce here will actually be available in a printable version, so you can access that via the link in the description below. Now, Module 8 is called From the Universe to the Atom. Now, the module is divided up into five key inquiry questions, and those inquiry questions really ask some important questions about our understanding of the elements. And in particular, as we look at the inquiry questions, we see or our understanding of science develops as we build models based on evidence. So the first inquiry question asks the question, what evidence is there for the origin of the elements? The second inquiry question asks, how is it known that the atom is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons? In essence, we're dealing with the atomic structure. The third inquiry question asks, how is it known that classical physics cannot explain the structure of the atom? So we're really addressing the quantum mechanical model. The fourth inquiry question digs deeper and asks, how can the energy of the nucleus be harnessed? So I'm just gonna simplify it by just writing the nucleus. And going deeper still, the last inquiry question says, how is it known that our human understanding of matter is incomplete? And throughout these questions, starting from the origins to the further exploration, going deeper and deeper to our understanding of matter, what we also cover as we do these inquiry questions, we examine how over a period of about 150 years, that evidence resulted in the development of models and those models were challenged and revised and thrown out as more evidence came in. And so that process is an important process to also appreciate in this particular module. In our fourth inquiry question, we go away from examining the structure of the atom and in particular the behavior of the electrons that exist in orbit. And now we concentrate our time on the nucleus. And in particular, in this inquiry question, we address the issue of energy and how that energy can be harnessed. And so in this particular inquiry question, we can divide this up into two key areas, though the areas do overlap in terms of the overarching concept, and I'll explain that in a moment. The first is the whole concept of radioactivity. And the other concept is the concept of fission and fusion. Now radioactivity is simply the release or spontaneous release of various particles that transmute the original element. And we have the idea of alpha radiation, beta radiation, and gamma radiation. Whereas fission and fusion is very specific. There we're dealing with, again, changes in the nucleus, either by splitting the atoms or combining the atoms. And in these cases, again, energy is involved. And so energy is released in terms of radioactivity and energy can also be released if we have fission for larger elements or fusion for lighter elements. And so ultimately E equals MC squared governs all three processes. Now, when we look at radioactivity, the syllabus in particular wants you to concentrate not only its properties, and I've already mentioned alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, but then also specifically how we measure that and we're interested in the half-life. In other words, the rate of this process can be measured and we refer to the concept of a substance's half-life, how fast it decays or transmutes into another element in the process of releasing alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. In fission and fusion, again, what we are particularly interested in is E equals mc squared, and tying in with this is the idea of the mass defect and binding energy. In other words, if we can cause heavy elements to go fissile, that is they separate, E is equals mc squared ultimately explains why we get energy in the first place. We have a mass defect, there's a loss of mass in the process, and as a result, that alters the binding energy per nucleon for those elements, and as a result, we generate energy. The same is true for fusion. So for any element that is smaller than iron, then if you combine these elements, you're gonna generate energy because the mass of the products ends up being less than the mass of the reactants. We have a mass defect and that results a change in the binding energy. But in terms of fission and fusion, one aspect is also the utilization. What do I mean? Well, 
understand that if we have a controlled nuclear reaction or controlled fission reaction, we have the things such as nuclear reactors where we can use that energy to harness to heat water and therefore provide electrical power. We also have uncontrolled nuclear reactions and of course those are things such as atomic bombs. So what's my key tip here? Well, it's E equals MC squared. And we've mentioned this, of course, earlier in module seven, when we looked at relativity, we looked at, at the origins, when we look at the Big Bang and uh, stellar fusion here, is that when we try to explain radioactivity, fission and fusion, E equals MC squared, it's the ultimate thing that binds all of these concepts together. The, the fact that the energy, and mass are equivalent, they're the same thing. We can either create matter out of energy, Big Bang, or we can create energy out of a loss in mass. And of course, this aspect here examines that in greater detail. Well, I hope that it helps you understand this particular inquiry question and as it fits in the other inquiry questions within this particular module. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you and please consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.